Welcome back. George, your GMAT tutor here. Today's training talk is on GMAT sentence character. If you are just starting your GMAT prep, then watch this video to get answers for these questions. What is tested in this exam? What skills should I develop first? My following videos will talk on the steps to master these essential skills which are required to crack this exam. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You can also contact me if you need any help in your GMAT prep. My contact details are in the about section below. So what is tested? The verbal section tests your language proficiency. Three broad aspects are tested. Number one, correct expression. A correct sentence is grammatically and structurally sound. It conforms to standard written English like noun verb agreement, noun pronoun agreement, tense consistency, etc. Number two, effective expression. A sentence that is grammatically sound and also expresses an idea or relationship effectively, such as cause effect, comparison, contrast. The idea should be expressed succinctly without superfluous words and complex sentence structure. Number three, proper diction. Sometimes sentences sound fanciful. An effective sentence uses appropriate words which are placed in a proper logical order. The words and word arrangement suitably convey the intended meaning of the sentence. Now that we have gone through the various aspects that are tested in GMAT sentence correction, let us now focus on the first stage of your preparation. Learn to identify various elements in a sentence correction question. Master the art of paying attention to detail. Sentences comprises of basic building blocks. Identify them first, then determine the relationship between these components. I have a simple exercise which can hone your skills. So here we go. Today's exercise is to identify all the various elements which are there in this article, like subject, verb, pronoun, any standard sentence structures. Let us analyze each and every line. One of the hardest questions in economics is mobility versus stability. I observe that is is my verb. Now before is, I have a noun question and I have a noun want. Now what is the subject for this verb is? One of the hardest questions in economics is, so we are talking about want of the hardest. That is my subject and it is singular. This is also singular. So there is a subject and a verb agreement here. Always remember one of the hardest questions. We should not be focused on the word questions. We should understand that it's a singular item we are talking about. So one is. What happens to workers? Happens is another verb. What is my subject for this? To workers who are displaced. Now, who is a pronoun and that is referring to workers. Workers are displaced. So, subject is workers, plural form. R is a verb, plural. Are displaced by recessions, technological and industrial change, regional shifts or corporate failure. Can humans move fluidly? So, move fluidly is my verb. And humans is my subject. Here we can understand humans is plural. So it should be move fluidly. It can't be moves fluidly because moves is a singular verb. If it had been human here, then it would have been moved. From occupation to occupation, industry to industry, and city to city, light like interchangeable parts in a well-oiled machine. Always going. Now, if you see this word going, this is what we call as a participle. We should not get confused with the continuous form of the word going because if it is in the continuous form, it would have been has going, have going, is going, things like that. This is a participle. Whenever we see a participle, we should try to focus on the subject of the participle. 
the doer of the action expressed by the participle is usually the subject of the main plot so who is the doer of this action going yes it is human so humans is the subject for this word going all you have to do is identify the main clause and the main subject then we could link the participle to the main subject going to where that yes that is a pronoun that is plural and it's referring to the word human their contribution will be most rewarded and their talent again that so that is again referring to human we observe the word and here and indicates parallelism where their contributions will be most rewarded and their talents utilized most effectively so it's parallelism here or would workers be better off here we observe the word would workers be better would be if if indicates a condition if the government and corporation help them help is in the past tense if the government and corporation help them whether so the condition is in past tense the consequence the consequence is would workers be better off would be has to come and that is what we call as a subjunctive form of the verb help them whether the economies ups and downs by staying in place them is again referring to the human now let's try out this official guy question i follow a three step process step 1 i identify the subject and the verb step 2 i identify the different clauses step 3 i try to identify if there are any standard structures in this question so while noble c say may be best known so maybe is my verb noble c say is my subject i observe that the word while is here now while indicates that this line all the way up to blake is a dependent clause while noble c say may be best known for its collaboration with u b blake does this line point to a particular idea it sounds incomplete so that's why it's a dependent clause it needs an independent clause the independent clause should have a main subject and the main verb so now let's move on as both a vaudeville performer and as a lyricist all the way up to musicals this is in a comma so let me bracket it out this again is not my independent clause because there is no main subject and main verb also enjoying an independent career all the way up to singers there is no main subject here main verb so one glaring error in this sentence is an absence of an independent clause there is no main subject main verb error 2 i see a standard structure both and as a both x and y is a standard structure not only x but also y is another standard structure there are around 30 of these standard structures which are tested often in this exam it's good that you master all of them whenever you see such an standard structure you should always think of parallelism both a vaudeville performer and a lyricist or both as a vaudeville performer and as a lyricist here we have to focus on the correct portion of the line both a so we have to write here as and a that is property so now let's look at the five options and eliminate the wrong one first i'll see the standard structure both x and y so both a and a i eliminate option a option b option c is correct as well as both and as well as cannot be used in the same sentence that's poor diction as well as so option c satisfies this so it should be the correct answer 
Let us go further and look at the second error. As I said, there is no independent clause here. Here we have enjoying, which is the participle. What is the subject of this participle? It refers to noble cise. The doer of the action expressed by enjoying an independent career. Who is enjoying? Noble cise. So to make this clause into an independent clause, all I have to do is convert enjoying to a verb enjoyed. So this is a verb. It should have a subject, so we put it as he. He also enjoyed. So he also enjoyed an independent career. Now, if you observe this third clause, becomes my independent clause. He also enjoyed is here. If you look at option E, it is he had also enjoyed. Had indicates past perfect, but the intended meaning of this sentence doesn't indicate two activities. Past perfect indicates that an activity started in the past and completed in the past. There's nothing like that intended in this sentence. So he had enjoyed his song. It could be just simple past. He also enjoyed. Now let's move on to a harder question. This sentence is from the official guide. Over the past 10 years, cultivated sunflowers have become. So have become is my verb. Cultivated sunflowers is my subject. A major commercial crop. So this line is my independent clause because it conveys the intended meaning. Second, only to soya beans as a source of vegetable oil. So this line is a dependent clause. Now let's look at the five options. Second, only to soya beans. Second, in importance to soya beans only. Being second in importance only. Which as a source of vegetable oil? Here I have which, which is my pronoun as a source of vegetable oil only. So if you look at the five options, the position of the word only changes. Here I have which. Immediately when I see the word which, I know that which modifies the immediately preceding noun. So the immediately preceding noun is commercial crop. Now that is not the intended meaning of this line because we are focusing on cultivated sunflowers and not commercial crop. So option D is eliminated. Now looking at A, B, C and E, a cursory inspection of the sentence indicates that all the options seem correct. But when we analyze the syntax, discrepancies emerge. We can use only in different positions depending on its focus. If the focus is on the subject, for example, only she knew where the key was. Here the focus is on she. If we focus on another part, I go only once a week. So here, the focus only is on once a week. So where is the focus? That is the key to eliminating the wrong off. Only to soya beans as a source of vegetable oil. What is the intended meaning of option A? I have a list. The first element in the list is soya beans. Second element is sunflower. This is the intended meaning of option A. Sounds good. Let's go to option B. Second in importance to soya beans only. If I have to focus only on soya beans, then this is the intended meaning. But if I focus only on as a source of vegetable oil, then the implied meaning is as a source of vegetable oil, it is second. Probably in another category it comes first. So the meaning of the line is ambiguous. Being second in importance only to soya bean. So here again the focus of the word only is ambiguous. Either we talk about the importance or we talk about as a source. Here again the word only the focus is on the source or on soya bean. So if you see Option B, C, and E, the focus is ambiguous. This makes the sentence unclear. Whereas if you look at option A, the sentence is concise and conveys the meaning. So that's it, folks. Any doubts, any queries, email me.
and if you want to register for the next webinar the link is provided in the above section thank you